Hello, welcome to ResoCoder and in this video I am going to continue in the trend of software developers drinking some hot beverage in their video. This is a black tea, so if you like it, welcome to this video. If you don't, anyway, welcome. And in this vlog I am going to be talking about how you should choose your language which you are going to learn in 2019 or beyond. Well, you know, the first thing about picking a language is that you should not be obsessed about it because as soon as you become obsessed about something like this, which is not really all that important as I'm going to explain later, you may make some major mistakes and you might actually come to a point where you don't pick anything because you are too afraid to, do, to pick something, right? Because if you think that programming language, the choice of programming language for, with which you are going to go into your future career is something that is going to determine your career and then you are not going to be able to move to some other language, well, that can really like freeze you and uh, you will at the end not choose anything and you will just pass on programming as a whole. The reality is though that uh, programming languages are not all that important and why is that? Well, that's because almost all modern languages share the same basic concepts like if you can call a function in lang one language, you can call a function in another language. If you can create classes in one language, chances are that uh, you will be able to create classes in a different language, right? Most of the time, the differences between languages are really just in the syntax. So in Python, you don't use semicolons and you don't use break brackets, but in uh, Java, you do use them. But basically, the concepts are almost the same. Java, uh, like I don't really like Java, so let's pick for example Kotlin. In Kotlin you have brackets, in Python you don't have them. Kotlin is good for something, for example Android development or overall Java virtual machine development, where you can use Java, there you can use Kotlin. And Python is good for something else, for example artificial intelligence or even web development with Django or Flask, right? And you really have to choose some language which will enable you to do your desired job. You see, picking a language is a matter of really just focusing on what you want to be doing with that language. Because although it's true that every single language nowadays can do anything, hell, you can even program Android apps in pure C++ if you are really brave, but uh, you probably wouldn't want to program Android apps in C++. You want to program them in Kotlin or Java. The same goes for any other language. Like you can do some even Android apps in Python, but you would probably not want to do that because there is Android native and there is also Flutter, which you can use really nicely. I have a separate video about that, so you can check it out over here. And Flutter can uh, enable you to write one code for Android, iOS and in a few months it's going to come that to a point that you can write Flutter code which will be able to run on the web as well. So you also have to keep that in mind. Pick a language which will save you some time by uh, you not writing three code bases at the same time just to have one project on three different platforms. So that is also something to keep in mind. If you want to do cross-platform development, you should probably choose Dart C Sharp because it has Xamarin where you can build for, for iOS, Android, Windows Phone and also uh, do web development with C Sharp, right? ASP.NET. If you want to do native Android, you pick Kotlin or Java. If you want to do native iOS, you probably pick Swift and not even touch Objective-C if uh, you don't want to kill yourself, probably. But if you want to work on legacy code bases, you probably are going to need Objective-C as well. But if you are just building some new apps, you probably want to go with Swift right off the bat. And as soon as you learn one language, you are going to learn other languages really quickly because the differences between them, as I've said already, are really only syntactical. Another thing about learning a new programming language for you in 2019 or beyond is that you should probably learn the language pretty quickly. 
because if you just go through tutorials, that's cool, but you also have to have some real life experience under your belt. And the best thing that you can do to learn a language is to pick a simple project at first and build it. So for example, console application is the best way to start, but not just some console application where you use one for loop and call it a day. You should build something really substantial without UI because UI is, can be quite tricky at first. So you just build console application, but you build some money manager application, like you build a simple bank account manager, for example, I don't know, or you build some uh, simple database application in console, you just enter some data, you store it in the database and so on. So you will have some real experience and then you can progress forward to pick some framework. So not just pure language, but you pick a framework like, uh, I don't know, Android, Flutter or something else, Angular, for front-end web development or uh, Django for back-end, front-end together and uh, or I don't know, Lar Laravel for PHP and then progress forward through that. And in order to learn, as I said, you really need to pick a project. And I have a separate video detailing how to pick a project which you will build and how to learn really quickly any programming language that you want. So check it out from the card in the corner. And yeah, so that's basically it. You have to pick a language, then you have to get experience through coding real life projects. You have to not obsess about picking a language because uh, if you obsess about it, chances are that you are going to give up really soon without even picking a language in the first place. And then just code and uh, if you like it, continue. If you don't like it, really, after a few months, you can pick a different language, a different framework and go from there. But uh, you have to realize that even if you do pick a different language along the line, you are not going to lose your experience from that previous language. So even if you switch languages, the new language will be much easier for you to learn because you are already a sufficiently knowledgeable programmer so that you can spot the differences and learn much more quickly. The thing is that it's harder to learn if you don't know anything prior to learning because you don't even know what to learn. But if you already know one programming language, you now know, oh, I want to create a class, for example. So I know that I can even create a class. But if I am complete noob in programming, I don't know even what classes are. So I have to look it up. I don't know what is a higher order function that I can pass a function to another function. So I have to look it up. I have to learn the concepts. But once you learn the concepts properly, then you can just look up the concepts syntactically in different programming languages and you are going to learn them in one day. Seriously, when I started learning Dart for Flutter, I already knew C Sharp quite well. I knew Kotlin and then Dart came like this. It was nothing really. Dart was like a breeze because I already knew two languages previously so I could learn Dart really quickly. So keep that in mind and that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, definitely give it a like and also subscribe to this channel because I will be making many more videos like this and if you don't want to miss them, consider hitting the bell button as well because if you do that, you are going to also get notifications about every new video that I upload and it's definitely worth it. If you have any questions about this topic or if you have some ideas about which topic I should cover next, leave them in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and see you in the next video.